Push the throttle all the way in, nice and easy. Not the king, no not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber, 
For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which has wings shall tell the matter. Yeah. And then in Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The, 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 the underlying crux of this message is how to be led by the Spirit of God. How to walk in your calling and in your anointing. That, which, that, that the grace that's upon you relative to aviation. You know, when you, when a, um, whether you are flying from here to Denver or you're flying from here to Fort Wayne, um, uh, under, under certain conditions, you know, a pilot will file a flight plan. A flight plan is basically a description of that proposed flight. And when you, when you file your flight plan, you're going in there into a room where they've got some, uh, com some computers and you're, you're, you're going to be looking at the weather. How much fuel is it going to take you to get to, say, to Fort Wayne? What airspeed are you going to have to uh, uh, maintain at what altitude? How much weight is in the airplane? How many people are you taking? How much the weight of the airplane? I mean, the weight of the fuel, the weight of the people that's in the plane. Atmospheric conditions like uh, air temperature at altitude, barometric, the barometric pressure, the dew point, and all those things all come into play. When you, when you take a flight. Now, if you're flying just around the pattern, just flying around the field, taking off and doing touch and goes, is that, you, know, you don't necessarily need to do all that. But, and then also, the flight plans, if you get into trouble and crash, the FAA knows where you're at. So, um, and, and with a flight plan, you know, it, it is where you're setting your vision. This is where I'm going to go. You're, you're establishing the vision of where you're going to go. Where you're, where's your destination? You know, and the word says where there is no vision, the people perish. I'm not saying that if you don't file a flight plan, you're going to die. But, you know, it's always wise to file a flight plan if the situation warrants it. So, and then Habakkuk 2, 2 in the Amplified says, Write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets, and I'll come back to that, that everyone who passes by may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. What do you think they, a lot of pilots use in the, not necessarily uh, United Airlines or Delta, but corporate jets, uh, people who have their own s smaller planes, what do you think that they have their flight plan on inside the cockpit? Tablets, iPads, that's what they don't use paper, they don't use paper uh, flight plans or uh, maps anymore, they use iPads and, and so forth. So write the vision and grade it, and grade it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes by may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. Habakkuk 2.2 and 2 Amplified. And when you walk out to your plane, let's say, um, you know, we're all going to take a ride, we're, we're going to walk out to the plane, there's certain things you, you, you need to do. And, it, and it's, uh, it's called a pre-flight safety check. And whether you are flying a, a four-seat Cessna 172 or you're flying an Airbus 330 to Munich, Germany, the pilot or the first officer is going to be out there going, he's going to be walking around the plane doing a, a, a flight check. Now, the guy doing the one on the A3, you know, the Airbus going to Munich, his flight, his pre-flight is going to be a little bit different than if I'm going out to Muncie Municipal and doing it on a 172, but basically it's still the same thing. I'm looking at the control surfaces, the things that cause the plane to, you know, move. I'm going to, I'm going to move them around with my hand, make sure that they, they all move. I'm going to, I'm going to get up in, onto the wing and I'm going to check the fuel, make sure there's no. I'm going to make sure it's full. I'm going to get up under the wing and there's this little thing where you stick it up and it, it uh, drips some oil, uh, some fuel into a, a little bottle, make sure there's no water in it. I'm going to check the propeller. I'm going to check the oil level, and, and, and so forth. I'm going to check all these things, and. If you ever are going to fly on a plane, and let's say you go from here to Muncie, you go from Muncie to Fishers. When you take off here, if that pilot is not doing a pre-flight, do not get on that airplane. Yeah. If, if he flies from, uh, say, from here to Fort Wayne, it only takes 30 minutes, and then he stops and goes to the bathroom, he's going to fly to Fishers. He goes, why, when he comes back out of that restroom, he never be on a pre-flight. And when he gets down to Fishers, if he's only there to drop you off, and maybe go to the bathroom again, he better come out and be doing a pre-flight when he comes back. Every single time you're going to do a pre-flight. So when you ever venture out on something that the Lord has told you, Pastor David, you'll hear him 
refer this to me is where is the scripture? You, if you don't base your what you're doing on scripture, you are you are destined to fail. You must have scriptures to back up what you do. Now, sometimes that's you know it's easier said than done. You might think uh, they they don't just necessarily jump off the other page. Sometimes you're going to have to dig for them to find out where they are, but. Don't ever start on anything without having scripture. I'm sure when they started their ministry, they, they had scripture back it up because if you don't, you, you're going to fail. You, you know, uh, and so forth. Um, on, on the site, if you look at the side of small airplanes, like the one I took uh, lessons in, it has a, all of you planes registered in the United States have an an N number. It might say N, and then it has, you know, it might say, you know, 13967. It might say N, you know, 1962J, which is Brother Copeland's jet. Um, that's what's on his. The ones I took um, lessons in was N229ME, 229 Mike Echo. You use the phonetic, phonetic alphabet to, to do the, the characters. And that's how, that's how you are identified with air traffic control. When you, when you always will talk with air traffic control, you always identify yourself. 229 Mike Echo, doing this, doing that, and so on and so forth. You know, and in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, if, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new in Christ. That's your identification in Christ. And then 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's who you are. That is your identification with air traffic control. You are the righteousness of God in Amen. him. Amen. And Acts 17.28, In him we live and move and have our being. You must know who you are in Christ. And, and before you take off in that airplane, you can't get out on the end of the runway and say, uh, I don't even know what the number on the side of the airplane is. It's usually, it's usually up on the dash there, up on the, the windscreen, whatever the dash I'll call it. But for the sake of conversation, for this conversation, we'll say it's right there. You need to know, you don't know who you are. So you, you, if you don't know who you are in Christ, you're going, the devil's going to eat you alive. He's going to spit you out. He's going to eat your lunch and you won't even get to look in the bag. You know? Um, and, and a part of flying is the, the, the I never got into the, the, the heavy stuff of communication with air traffic control. Of course, at Fishers, there's no tower. There's one at Muncie, but there's not one in Fishers. And so I never got really into uh, where I had to communicate with air traffic control or to make any declarations when I was, you know, when, when my instructor and I would take off and, and do things. But... Um, you know, in 2 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians 4.13, it says, We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, the Lord God is air traffic control. You must run everything through Him. You must not do anything without air traffic control knowing what you're doing. Yeah. And then you must have a, a basis for it. Where is your scripture? That is, that's, that's just a big thing with me. And then, and then it says, pray with all, pray always with all prayer. So how do we communicate with air traffic control? Praise and worship, speaking in tongues, praise and, uh, and, and, and prayer. That's how we keep in contact with air traffic control. Air traffic control will then tell you, you tell them what your intentions are, and if it lines up with what, what they see, because they see the big, they see, you get the implication here, they see the big picture. You see the end of the runway where you're getting ready to take off. They see everybody going on. So you must, it's very imperative that you maintain air traffic uh, communication with ATC. And therefore, it's always uh, uh, imperative that you maintain uh, communication with air traffic control because he sees the big picture. He knows what's going on from a, from a larger perspective. He sees things you don't see. He can direct you. If he sees a storm coming, he can direct you to another heading and you can go around and get back on the right heading. Right. So, and, uh, you know, and, and, and then Joshua says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So, um, 
you know, uh, communication with AT is extremely important. You, your life will depend upon it. It'll keep you from running into somebody, crashing into somebody, and, and so forth. And just as, a, as an example, uh, I, I wrote down um, kind of an example of what, when you're in a plane, what, what the communication with, um, let me see here, air traffic control or uh, let's assume, uh, I said Fishers does not have a, a tower, but let's assume it has a tower for the sake of conversation. I'll, uh, I'll read, I'll, this is kind of what it would sound like. Uh, um, let's say I, I'm, um, uh, I'm sitting at the hangar over there at the Fishers Airport, and I would go, Metro Tower 229, Mike Hedlow at the hangar ready for taxi. And then air, the tower will come back, 229, Mike Hedlow, you are, 229, Mike Hedlow, you are cleared to taxi, hold short one way, one five. So that tells me that I can taxi out to the air, end of the roadway down by Allison Hill Road, and there's a line, there's a set of lines on the pavement that, that uh, not just the, you know, just two yellow lines, but the, the, the lines, when you look at them, they mean a certain thing. That, that, you know, it might be two solid lines and then dot, 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 that means hold short. And, I'll, and then I'll go clear the taxi, hold one way, Clear the taxi, hold short runway 15229, Mike Echo. What am I doing? I'm repeating back what the saying is. So, wow. so when you get into circumstances, you get into situations, you must repeat what the word says. Yeah. You repeat back to air traffic control what they told you to do. This is what you said you were going to do. This they cleared you to do it. Yeah. And so you repeat back what they just told you to do. That way they know that you know and they understand what your instructions are. So always, again, have you look, where's your scripture? And then in any situation, always say what the word says. It doesn't, I know you know this, I'm preaching to the choir. Always, always, always and I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah. Say back what the word says. Never deviate from that. If you don't deviate from that, you will be on your proper, you will, air traffic control will release you to go right. and, and take off on your proper heading and then they will tell you if you have encounter a storm or you need to increase your, decrease your altitude or increase your altitude wherever you need to go. Uh, and and you, you can see the, the uh, inference there with, with, with the word. Right. If, if you keep in contact with the Lord God Almighty, he will direct you out of the storms. Yeah. It doesn't mean you won't, buy, you won't feel a little wind but you will always bypass the storm and you will arrive at your destination free and clear of all hurt, harm, danger, or accident. Amen? Amen. Um, you know, a, a, like a real world example is like right now, um, Judy knows what I'm talking about, that there are maybe times during the day when her and I are experiencing some um, discomfort and we've got to say what the word says. You've got to say what the word says. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed now. I, I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. Pastor Kerry laid her hands on me, and I, I felt the power of God in my body. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. And then, what I do, uh, not every day, but uh, when I'm on my way to work, I get on there and put on God's medicine for Brother Hagel, where he reads the scripture from starting in Proverbs chapter four, I believe it is, and, and he goes all the way through reads the whole book of Deuteronomy, he reads the whole book of Galatians chapter 3, or Deuteronomy 28, Galatians chapter 3. You've you got to keep that, keep that going in your mind, because if you don't, yeah. situations and circumstances, unknowing to you, will start to pull you away, and pull you away, so you've got to keep that word that's pertinent to whatever situation you have, you've got to keep it going in your ears. You know, also in, in flying, there's what's called visual flight rules, which is when you're flying, you can you have a ground reference. You can see the ground. You, you know, stay below the clouds. That could be, you could be at uh, 500 feet, you could be at, you know, 8,000 feet, but if you're below the clouds, you're still flying under visual flight rules, which is what most beginner pilots and student pilots like myself, when we, when we flew, that's what we were under visual flight rules. And then you've got IFR, which is in, uh, instrument flight rules, which is when the, you know, the, the big airlines, Delta, United, and um, private jets and corporate jets, and even planes of this size, when they get into the clouds and you have no visual reference on the ground, you fly by the instruments. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, who's ever experienced vertigo where you've had the ear pain where, where you've, um, uh, you, you, you come up like this? Your, your inner ear is, is causing your, your balance to be off. Um, when you get into instrument flight, when you get into IFR conditions, and there, your, uh, I don't know what, why it does it or how it does it, but your inner ear, it, you might be flying along at uh, 5,000 feet, let's call it. And in, in your inner ear is telling you that you are going up like this. But when you, when you when really not, you're flying straight and level, but your inner ear is telling you that you're doing, you know, turning left, turning right, going down, going up. If you were ever get, get your license and you fly and, you, and you're in, under IFR conditions, and your, your inner ear is telling you that you're going up. But this, this flight right here, this instrument in the middle, the one up here help, will indicate whether you, you're climbing like this or going down or, or you're turning like this. And in this case, this person, this is obviously planes not in the air, but this is indicating a very, very shallow left, left bank turn. You can see it where the right wing is kind of up in the air a little bit. Under um, normal straight level flight, that those little brown wings will be in line with that solid, thick white line going across. That, so if you are flying along, and um, your inner ear, your ear is telling you that you're doing something other than that, follow that. Do not follow what your body is telling you. Because if you follow what your body is telling you, somebody's going to have a funeral to go to in a few days. Because that instrument will tell you what you are doing, not your body. Right. And so for the, if the word says you're healed, and your leg is quivering, and you have some pain in your, in your right leg, and you, you might be having a pain in your right leg, but the word of God supersedes what your body is telling you. Now that doesn't mean you'd be stupid, and you've got all this pain, and you don't go to the doctor. That's just as stupid as not following what that instrument says. But you, you, in, 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 the, in the Christian walk, you've got to use some common sense. So, you know, if, if your body's hurting that bad, go to the doctor and find out what's going on. But still, the Word of God supersedes and overrides everything that the world is telling you, that the world's trying to, uh, to squeeze you with, and what your body is telling you. That the Word of God supersedes over that. God doesn't take second place to anybody. The Word of God takes second place to nobody. Right. Amen. So, always, always, always follow that instrument. Always follow what the Word says. It doesn't matter what your, what your body is telling you. Um, there's a, um, Lauren, Laura's never, the only flying she's ever done in a small plane was when I took some lessons, but she's, she knows about this, is um, you, if, let's say you are flying back into Indianapolis Airport, and you're, you're on final, you know, you, you can see the ground and you can see, you know, the runway's coming up and, and they're flaring. They've got the front of the nose up a little bit. And you all of a sudden you feel the pilot kind of, it feels like you're coming down like this. Don't be alarmed. That, that's, a, that's a perfectly normal condition. What that is saying is if the wind is blowing this, wind's blowing this way, the pilot's got to get the, the nose straight. So he's going to, if he's pushing it this way, he's going to have to give it some um, left rudder. So... The, the tail of the airplane on the back, is, there's a part where it will, it will come out, you know, it, it goes like this. So he'll, he'll give a little bit of right rudder, so it'll bring that nose back on the center. Yeah. And, and uh, he may do it just before he touches down. That's called crabbing into the wind. Right. And, and so that's a perfectly normal condition. And so, you know, sometimes situations in life can cause you to some confusion and disruption. I'm on the wrong line. Stand by if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So, again, you know, you, you might be, uh, you might be, see, like, I see my victory, I see it's coming, but you're getting, you're getting pushed by the wind. Straighten out that nose, give it a little bit of right rudder, give it a little bit of ref, left rudder, and just come in smooth. You know, it's, uh, Proverbs 18, 14 says, A strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. Um, what these verses are uh, implying is that if you, you know, 
as, as we all go through life, we, we're going to experience some, some difficulties. There's going to be some wind blowing us off center. We're, 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 you know, we're trying to land the plane. We're coming in. We're flaring. We're, we're, good, we're, good, we're going good. You know, all the, everything's looking good. But the wind's blowing us a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. We just got to get a little bit of rudder and get that, that nose back on straight. Um, you know, and, and, and face the circumstances knowing that you've already won the victory. You know, we, we read the back of the book, we already win, so we already know it. Now, it, it, sometimes that's easier said than done, especially like in what's going on in right this very present moment. You know, it, it, it can look like, you know, there's a lot of despair, a lot of people are in fear and everything. And, and it's, you know, it's it easier said than done not to to get caught up in that. But, you know, and... and uh, don't saturate yourself with everything that's going on, even from a conservative news source, whatever it might be. Uh, uh, you, you, even the, 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 those that are the conservative news sources that are telling you the truth, they're, they're telling you the truth, but it's from the, the bad stuff that's going on. So you, you, you can't, you can't uh, eat all that. You've got to eat something that's a little bit more positive because that's going to, it's going to get you off center line of that runway. Um, because, um, I, I had asked Pastor Kerry to, to sing that song we did tonight so I can get a little charged up. And then there's another one that I'll, I'll always get charged up on called Your Name is Victory by uh, Jonathan Nelson. And uh, so know that your name is victory. Because you are victorious in all things, whatever the situation, you are victorious. Um, James 1, 2 through 5 in the Passion Bible says, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up the power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. Amen. So, whatever situation we face, God's got an answer for it. If, 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 you're, if, you, if you're experiencing what Judy and I are experiencing right now, God's got an answer for it. If, if your finances are lacking, God's got an, experience, he's got an answer for it. If, uh, if you need a job, and, and I'll give a testimony that, uh, about that, um, He's got an answer for it. And that testimony is back in 2009, Laura and I worked for a company of fishers that went out of business in February of 2009, went out of business, and we were both out of a job immediately. And so um, it was not until August I actually found a job in the credit union industry. But I was in the work, I, of course, I was doing, if, if you're looking for a job, don't, if, if if you sit around and don't send out resumes and don't look, you're going to you're going to you're going to be hungry real quick. So there's a natural thing that you got. You just can't sit around and expect God to drop a job in your lap because He ain't going to do it. I can tell you that right now. He is not going to do it. There's you've got to get out there and look. You've got to pound the pavement, use wisdom. Obviously, ask for wisdom. Use wisdom. But I was in the Word every day, every day, contesting the Word, contesting the Word every day, every day, and then. Um, you know, and there's sometimes when, when the answer comes and you realize, and you look at what the answer was, you say, good night, nurse. I could have, if I had been listening to the Spirit of God, what he just told me, if I could have heard that nine months ago, I would have been, you know, on unemployment for the past nine months. So, um, I was at home, and uh, some of you, I'm sure you're familiar with the story where Brother Hagin um, was laying in bed, and, and the, the Spirit of God said to him, do you believe you're healed? He says, yes, I believe I'm healed. We said, well, then well, people ought to be out of bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so so I, I started thinking, okay, if I, and, and faith, must, faith must have accompanying action with it. You can't just say I have faith and, and, and not do anything. Right. Because that's just foolishness right there. That's a lack of wisdom right there. And so I was thinking, if I, if I believe, okay, there's got to be corresponding action. If I believe I have a job, what would I be doing? I, think, I kept saying, if I had a job, what would I be doing? If I had a job, I'd be going to work. What did I do when I had a job and I was going to work? Okay, so what I did the next morning 
is I got up in my regular time, went through my whole routine that I had been doing nine months ago, ate breakfast, fixed a lunch, got in my truck, drove around the block, and came back in and parked the G truck and went in and started pounding the internet with resumes. And, and boom, 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 job just come just, and I got the job, I got a job. So, um, uh, and, and I think, man, if, if I had known this, I could nine months ago, if I had heard this, and whose fault is it that I did not, because what he was telling me then was he was telling me the same thing nine months ago, I just did not hear it, is, is that if, if, if we want something bad enough, if we want our healing bad enough, if we want wisdom bad enough, if we want prosperity enough, we will go to the nth degree to, to get it. If you, when I say you, I'm talking in general. If you are believing for something, but you're giving a half-hearted effort for it, you're going to be doing that a long time. You've got to go into it like this is, I mean, this is do or die. If I don't, you know what I'm saying? Then this is uh, like your last breath. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the swimming pool. I'm going down for the third time. Someone needs to come and grab my arm when it goes up in the air like this. So, I mean, press in. Press in, press in. Um, Matthew 7, 25 says, Therefore, whoever said, Here is these things in mind, and doeth to them, I will liken it to him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, shall he, doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. As the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And then James 1, 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you move out in something, when the pastor moves out in something or the Lord tells him something, that, you, you've got to have revelation knowledge of something. Uh, you can't just go out on your own, on your own whim. Well, I think the Lord told me this. Well, again, where is, did, did, did you say, okay, this is what the Lord told me. Where is the scripture? That's your revelation knowledge. You don't, you can't venture out into anything without revelation. Even from a natural perspective, get some revelation knowledge on that. Yeah. Do I need, should I take this job? There's obviously not any scripture that says you need to take this job at the full, uh, you know, at the uh, such and such a place, but you, because there are there's uh, there's uh, uh, scriptures or there is he will tell you things. How do I say this? Um, there's no certain scripture to tell you what job to take, what college to go to. That's but that, uh, but if there are some certain scriptures. You know that that will back up with your with your if you follow me. Um, so get get revelation knowledge on that. Um, because, uh, revelation knowledge will help you escape all these 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 winds that are blowing you off center of the runway uh, and so forth. Uh, now um, this heading indicator up here is the. Is the one in the middle, the one that's got the 30, 33, 36, east, 12, 15, and so forth. That's the heading indicator. That's when you um, take off, let's say, from Fishers again, you, you know, you call the tower, and uh, you, uh, he may tell you, you've got one way, one five, and, and you've got three, three. So it's, you know, you always add a zero to the end of the number on the runway, and that's the degree, heading degree that it's pointing in. And then on the opposite end, you add 180 degrees to that, and that's what the number's on the other end, because, you know, 100, you know, 180 degrees. And when you, you may take off and you say, you know, I'm, uh, this is 229 Mike after departing uh, runway 15 in the metro, uh, maintain uh, runway heading on departure or something. So, you, you know, you, you take off. And you get up there, and air traffic control tells you, um, say you're going out to Denver or whatever. You may say, 229 knockout, go turn, turn left heading 270, and you can call back uh, left, uh, left heading 270, 229 knockout. Again, you're repeating back what the air traffic control is telling you. You know, we, we, all, have, there's, um, we all have graces that are, each of us are graced to do certain things. Yeah. 
there are certain things that we're good at, certain things we're not good at. And, and, and um, the, the grace that's upon you is not for, is not, let me put this, this is how Keith Moore puts it. You know, uh, when kids grow up, they may say, oh, oh son, you're so handsome, or, uh, or whatnot. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be this, or I want to be that. It's not for you to, to decide what you're going to be. If you're in the body of Christ, if you are born again, it's not for you to decide what you are going to be. It's for you to discover what you, what you are graced to be. Um, and, and, and for me, I'm, I'm graced in the area of supporting executives in, in, in an administrative capacity. Why? I don't know. I, that's not the thing I would pick. I probably would pick being a pilot or something like that. Or a professional baseball player or a military, you know, military pilot or something like that. But I got, he picked me to be a, to, su to support executives in an administrative capacity and I've been doing it for 42 years. And, uh, so, but he knows best. You know, it's not for us to, to tell God, you know, well, do you grace me to be, you know, a, a uh, uh, you know, support executives in an administrative capacity. I want to be a pilot. I want to be a pilot. That's the same thing as, um, uh, let, me, let me go over here. Let me, uh, let me use a scripture here. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Okay, let's say I got to open it back up here. I'll go right here. That's the last thing I'm reading. That's me. Let me find where I want to start here. Okay, here. First Corinthians twelve twenty one. You know, your assignment is your calling. What your assignment do is what the what your calling is. In First Corinthians twelve. 20, uh, 21 it says, And the eye is not able to say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. But there is absolute necessity for the parts of the body to consider more weak. Let me see if I'm in the right spot here. Oh no, I'm pulling back up. Oh, no. Verse 15, If the foot should say, I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, would it be therefore not a part of the body? And think of this as a calling, as, a, uh, as your place in the body of Christ. For uh, the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body. Would it be therefore not a part of the body? If the ear should say, because I am not the eye, I do not belong to the body. Would it be therefore a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, one big glaring eyeball, where would the sense be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would, the sense of, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is God has placed, not your mother, not Pastor David, not your teacher, not your grandma. God has placed and arranged the limbs and organs in the body. Each particular one of them, just as he wished, this is amplified, and saw fit with the best adaptation. Um, you know, um, like I said, I, I'm graced to do what I'm going to do. And... I can't venture off and just say, well, let's say that's a foot. Well, I don't want to be a foot. I want to be an eye. Right out there in the open, right where he gets to see everything, it, 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 it's, it's just not going to work. They're, 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 you're doomed for failure. Um, you know, it says here in, in Ephesians 4, 7, but to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. It's him. He decides what you're going to do. It is for you to discover that. Um, and, and trying, I'm trying to remember back Keith Moore's got a series called probably my favorite of all time called Graces and Places and he, he talks about this so if that, if that sparks your interest I, you know, get on YouTube and go listen to it, 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 it will, you won't be disappointed um, so I'm, I'm trying, to, so we're trying to remember some, you know, some of the things that he's talked about um, in that but uh, you know, as individual, and, and what I'm doing is trying to line this up with a heading indicator. The grace that's upon your life, God has already got a plan for you with that grace that's upon you to go in a certain direction. You may be flying, you know, air traffic control tells you turn left heading 270, which is absolutely due west. But you say, you call back, you know, um, uh, Metro, uh, Muncie Tower. Uh, turn, I'm, uh, 
coming through the 9 mic echo, turning right heading, you know, uh, uh, 080. He'll say, no, 229 mic echo, turn left heading 270. He's telling you that for a reason. Because if, if, if you start heading on 080, there's somebody out there at the same altitude that you're going to run into and you're going to kill, you're going to kill everybody in both planes. So air traffic control knows, knows, knows where you need to go, knows how, which heading you need to be on to get there. And that grace, that, that favor that's upon your life, that anointing that's upon you, that grace that you have will get you there. So it's imperative. Follow the instruments. Follow. This is your flight plan, right? Yeah. Well, well, this is my bio, electric my, my Kindle. This is your flight plan right here. That is your air traffic control. These two things right here will get you where you need to go, when you need to get there with the right amount of fuel, at the right altitude, bypassing any storms, IFR, VFR, it doesn't matter, and you will land safely and come to a complete stop and, and pull up to the hangar and get out. And, and get out at your destination in the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, you know, as individuals in the body of Christ mature, they will fly on their they will fly on their heading at different altitudes or levels. We all will mature at different times, different different it takes longer for one person to mature in the body than it does another person. That's, that doesn't mean one person's any smarter or any more spiritual than another person. Uh, and so, what I, I attributed that to flying at different altitudes. You know, Pastor Kerry may be up here at 33,000 feet on heading of 080, and that's, that's where she's going to get to her destination. I might be down here at, you know, 5,500 flying at 285. That's going to get me where we're, 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 we're going in different directions, but we're still going to get to our, our destination because we are following... Air traffic control, we're, 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 we're uh, following, we're, we've got scriptures, we've got the base out of one, we're operating in the grace that's upon us, and so we're going to get to our destination. Yeah. Um, uh, and, um, you know, when I was putting my notes together, I was thinking, um, I, think, I think I wrote it in here. Anyway, I, w I was thinking of something, and I wrote it down, and then went back in the notes, this little notebook I got from where Charles Capps had a message, and he, entered, he did some little, little piece on aviation. It was the exact same thing that he was saying. I said, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But what, on, on, the, on a, the, the forces that, that act on an airplane when it's in flight is lift, obviously, drag, which is what the wind's hitting against, the, the, you know, the windshield and so forth, thrust, which obviously is the propeller or the jet engine, and of course, weight, pulling, you know, gravity pulling down. And, you know, it takes faith, that's what it was, it takes faith to fly. I was thinking, it takes faith to fly, and then I flipped over to my notes, and then he had on there, it takes, where I wrote down, it takes faith to fly. Uh, because you're expecting something that you can't see passing over that wing to lift you up in the air and get you where you need to go. It takes a lot of faith. You know, we don't think about that, but it takes a lot of faith to fly, because... I'm not saying I know a lot about aviation, but um, I'll, I'll venture to say in this room, probably I'm probably the only one that knows what actually the forces that act on the wing that cause it to lift up. Because as, as it, because it's shaking, it's fat on the front end and it's sharp and it's thinner on the back end. So as the air flows over, it takes longer to go over the top than it does underneath. And it creates a low pressure system that tries to go towards the high pressure system on top of the wing and as it's thrust through the air, once it reaches a certain speed, that, that lift is enough to lift the plane right up in the air. So, um, you know, the, the, the shape of the wing puts the law of lift into operation. The law of lift also supersedes the law of gravity. And, 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 and when the wing will not produce lift until its thrust pushes it through the air. You're never going to arrive at your destination until you take the word and, and you push yourself through the air to your destination by following your heading, maintaining contact with air traffic control, follow, and maintaining and following your flight plan, exactly, exactly following your flight plan. Your confession of God's words is what causes, is what creates faith. So it's the same thing as an airplane. Thrust pushes that airplane through the air, which causes lift causes a low-pressure system on the bottom of the wing to push you up in the air, so when you pull back on the yoke, you go up in the air. So your confession of God's word is what causes you to lift up out of the doldrums of life 
and fly out to your destination. Amen. Until you put the word in the you know, word of God in your mouth, you're never going to rise above the curses of life. You're never going to. You're always going to be stuck on the ground. No thrust. No nothing. The word of God is a thrust to your to your calling and to your grace that's upon you. So. Without thrust, you're, you're just sitting there. You can have a you know a, a eight, $18 million airplane that's all gas and ready to go, and that's top, that's inside, that's nice and everything, and it can be sitting on the runway with the engines running, but until you put the power to it, it ain't going nowhere. So the word of God in your mouth puts power to it. And your confession is to your faith like thrust is to an airplane. The more you say, the more you believe. And to keep the plane in there, you have to keep the power up. You have to keep, keep the power to it. And the confession of the word will create the power force to create the manifestation of it. The manifestation of you flying is that plane lifting off of the air. Your, your confessing God's word will create the manifestation of what you're believing for. The word in itself is a seed. And, and by confessing the word, you're planting the seed. And the word of God has a power within itself to create what create that thing. In other words, like there is within a, uh, an apple seed, there's power within that apple seed to create the manifestation of what's in that seed. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm still going to say it anyway. So, um, what I'm, to, to, to wrap this all up is there is, there is, you may be able to take something that you you've got a lot of interest in and correlate that with word. I saw I saw it with aviation. I hope I hope you see it. Yeah. But um, um, and and I hope this you know was was a blessing to you. And um, and I'll be more than welcome to you know when we have more when we have more people to do it again. Yeah. All right. Amen.